the recording. All right, welcome everybody to our semester skill session here, September 24th. Um, as always, if you have any questions or you know, want to chat with us about anything, shoot us an email at tea at nd.edu, and we'll be happy to uh, work with figuring out those questions with you. I'm looking to, to this incredible session. We'll be looking into um, continuing education in themed entertainment, themed entertainment, sorry, and we have an incredible panel uh, joining us today from universities all over the country um, and a lot of experience under their belt. So we're really excited to have the chance to, you know, ask our questions and really engage with them in an open forum. Um, with that, jump into introductions and let's go ahead and pass it around and we can start with uh, Peter here. Um, did you did you want me to, to talk, you talk for a few minutes or just introduce myself? What, um, I, just introduce yourself first real quick. Sorry. Okay, yeah, just introduce uh, yourself first. Okay, uh, Peter Weishar, and I'm a professor of themed experience at UCF, and I'm the director of our MFA in themed experience program. Thank you, Peter. And then Mr. Shreve? Uh, I'm Bob Shreve. I'm a professor of themed entertainment design at SCAD. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm happy to be here as well. I mean, I'm looking forward to this. It'll be interesting. Awesome. Thank you. And then next on my list here is Shirley Saldemarco. Hi, I am Shirley. I'm on faculty, special faculty at Carnegie Mellon Entertainment Technology Center. Nice to be here. Thank you. And then MK? Uh, hello, uh, MK Haley. I am currently teaching at UCLA. I'm the theme entertainment design. I'm the head of academic outreach for Walt Disney Imagineering. I've also taught with um, um, Shirley at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, Peter Weish, who was my boss at Florida State, where I taught theme entertainment design. Um, I've taught at Cal State LA. I've advised at Savannah's College of Art and Design. Um, so there's a lot of different programs that I've had my fingers in. Oh, and starting in January, I'll be teaching theme entertainment design at UT Austin. Oh, wow. Awesome. And then lastly, we have Susan. Hi, I'm Susan Timko. I also work at Carnegie Mellon at the Entertainment Technology Center, and I am their director of career services. Awesome. Thank you, Susan. And thank you all of you panelists for taking the time out of your day to uh, share with us some of your experience and some of your knowledge as it pertains to you know, education in this industry. Um, so what we'll do next is we'll give those of you who have sort of a little bit of a spiel prepared about your um, group or your, your university, a chance to introduce us to what your program is and you know, what role it sort of fills for the students that attend there. And we can go through that same order, starting with Peter from UCF again. Okay, um, so just about me a little bit. Uh, I, I was the Dean of Entertainment Arts at SCAD, and I'd started the themed entertainment design program that uh, was, is very lucky to have Bob Shreve, so I'm really excited that they're continuing uh, uh, that program really well. Um, went on to be a, a, a Dean at FSU, uh, where I had the um, uh, Themed Experience Institute, and uh, as MK mentioned, she, she worked with us at, at FSU, and we're very glad to have her there. And then about three years ago, I was recruited to come to UCF to start a themed experience program. So um, we have one MFA in themed experience that is a three year fully accredited terminal degree part of the theater program. Um, we're just in our second year right now. Uh, we're doing cohorts of about 12 or 15 students. Um, it's a 61 credit program and it has uh, a good deal of electives and the third year of the program is uh, mostly internships and thesis. So we want people to get out and get involved in the area of Orlando. Um, you know, we, we are really lucky to be located really in the heart of the industry. And uh, we've got some um, amazing uh, adjuncts that we're able to bring on and people from industry. So there's a strong connection to Universal and, and WDI and and the dozens and dozens of other production companies that are there. So, um, and that, that we're uh, also, we just found out we're the only uh, nationally accredited program in themed experience. We just got approved by uh, the National Association of Schools of Theater. So we're pretty excited about that. Thank you, Peter. And then uh, Professor Shreve, would you mind sharing with us a little bit more about the program at SCAD? 
Sure. Um, Peter probably knows a lot more about it than I do because I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm only in my second year here. Um, prior to that, I, uh, I came out of WDI as, and uh, left WDI, WDI in the 90s, went uh, to Universal on um, projects, uh, built Universal's Islands of Adventure, uh, Jurassic Park for them, and then uh, uh, managed to uh, end up running the, the creative studio for Universal uh, for a number of years. And then um, my wife is from Georgia, and we found out about a small company looking for uh, somebody to run their design studio in, in Atlanta, Georgia. She, say, she told me I had to apply for the job, so I went. And, uh, <laughs> and I uh, ended up working for Hirsch and Family Entertainment. Uh, and I, I was there for about 15 years, and then I, recently retired and started teaching at SCAD. Uh, SCAD kind of is a unique program. It's a, a, a two-year MFA in, in themed entertainment um, that we base it more on trying to help you understand your uh, what roles are available to you in themed entertainment. And we partner you with a lot of mentors in the industry uh, who, through connections with the uh, our past in the industry and the faculty there. So we try and create opportunities that are tailored to whatever it is that you want to do. That's our hallmark. So that's what I know about SCAD. Thank you. And then let's pass it on to Shirley and Susan from Carnegie Mellon. Okay. Uh, Susan decided I should first and then she's going to either correct all the things I say incorrectly or add in all the additional information that I forget. Carnegie Mellon is a two-year graduate program, and we are now just a little bit over 20 years old. We started in 1998, founded by Don Marinelli and Randy Pausch. And I always like to tell this story. Randy used to say the ETC was the world's biggest playground with an electric fence. Not that we electrocute our students, but I'm not going to go into the detail about that. Um, our students end up getting an MET, a Master's of Entertainment Technology, which I think is, is a degree that's kind of unique to Carnegie Mellon and to uh, the ETC. For me, I think one of the, the most uh, striking and unusual things about the ETC is that we are completely project-based. And what that means is that our students will, in their first semester, take something that we fondly call boot camp. And that is where they take three core courses of building virtual worlds, visual story, and improv. And in just as a quick example, building virtual worlds, they're broken up into four teams. And every two weeks, they have to deliver a prototype of something. They're giving in, given instructions and they have to build something that actually kind of sort of works. And then they switch teams and they do it all over again and they end up doing that for the whole semester except for the one week when they have to build a prototype in one week. So what helps that prepare them for is this whole idea of um, don't think it to death, you know, just get out there, do it, figure it out and, and kind of move on with it. So um, what is the, I think another strength of the ETC is that our focus is not in one area. It is over all of the entertainment technologies. You know, our client, we, we come upon projects in three different ways through um, collaborations with for profit companies, nonprofit companies, uh, where students are encouraged to pitch their own projects. So they put a team together, come up with this really gangbusters idea, and then pitch it to the faculty. Um, and the faculty is encouraged to do the same thing, pitch ideas. And then third, we do these philanthropic projects, which I think are really, really important to help the students just kind of never forget that you, it's kind of nice to give back there when you can. And through all of that, all of these various projects, the clients that we end up working with are all over the board. I mean, we work with Google and Amazon. Um, a whole variety of museums, electronic arts, um, games for change. I, I'm probably missing millions and billions, but you know, it's just that wide variety of opportunities for students to hone their creative and their technical skills, but most importantly, to learn how to collaborate together, how to communicate, how to take on roles of leadership. And I think that's what we do 
kind of in a, in a, a really a way. We try to prepare our students so that on day one, they're willing and able to jump into a job and just hit the ground running. Um, I don't know, my three words when I think of ETC are in educate, engage, and inspire. And I kind of think that that's um, a good round out of what we do. Susan, help me out here. What do you think? I think you did a fantastic job. <laughs> um, I will say my one comment uh, is just because we don't focus, we have a breadth of focus. Um, I think people come away with a really uh, good understanding, not only about their role and what they're doing, but what others do on the team. And I think that's a real asset. Awesome. Thank you both for uh, your words on the ETC at Carnegie Mellon. And then MK, would you mind sharing with us some of the programs that you have taught and that you teach currently? Yeah, and so to add on to what's happening at the ETC, um, which was born in the parking lot at Imagineering when Randy Pausch and I sat out in plastic lawn chairs and he said, why can't academia be more like this, you know, where people of different disciplines sit with each other? Um, one thing that's really nice about all the programs we're talking about, as well as others, um, the game design program at USC, Ringling School of Art and Design Animation, a lot of students who apply to these graduate programs get accepted by three, four or five of them. Um, every single one really knows who it is and what value they add. And we'll ask you, what are you looking for? And we'll send you to the other school. Like if, if you wanna be a phenomenal 3D animator, that's not what, that's not what uh, Peter's program in Florida does. That's not what the ETC that will send you to Ringling, right? Um, and so I really appreciate this sort of this camaraderie amongst programs instead of competition, um, that here's what we do and we do it really, really well. And here's what they do and we'll send you there if that's what you need. Um, so the relationship that the Walt Disney Company has had, with, with me at least, um, for teaching is um, somebody else is a subject matter expert, right? Right now we have Imagineers on behalf of the Walt Disney Company teaching at UCLA, where I teach and also Cal Poly Pomona in the architecture department. Um, so they have a world-class architecture department. They're teaching you all the foundations, principles, load bearing, such like that. Our job is to teach you how to tell stories with your discipline. So if you're a theater major or film or engineering or architecture, how do you tell a story with that discipline? Um, and so that allows us to have minimal commitment on our part, right? We just teach one or two classes in each of those programs, but it allows those folks to come away with a really an expanded view of what they can do. So the UCLA program, um, uh, after 9-11, we changed our charitable giving strategy at Imagineering and we decided to give human beings instead of money. We used to donate cash to universities. We don't do that anymore. We'll volunteer bodies. And so um, I set up the program and taught it for the first four years from 2002 to 2006. Um, and it's always been multidisciplinary. Um, then I moved to Pittsburgh and then I moved to Florida and then I moved back um, and I'm teaching there again. And my class is two quarters, spring, uh, winter and spring, and I had 100 students from 46 majors in my winter class. Um, then the advanced class, I had 36 students from 20 majors. So it is, it's all about, as, as Shirley um, had mentioned, it's all about cross-disciplinary, making people understand the value that you add to a project and the value that other folks add as well. Um, and I'm really excited by the fact that I used to be able to lecture and say, there's no such thing as a degree in theme park. And that is not true at all anymore. Um, and it's not just degrees. Um, there's also minors, certificates, individual courses. Um, so if this is an industry you're interested in, there's a lot of ways to get your feet wet. Awesome. Thank you for the, uh, the insight from your experience. To give people a sense of how we're gonna sort of dive into these questions now, we have three questions that we sort of got from you attendees early on will ask those three to all of and ask for a response from each of you panelists and then we'll open it up into a sort of open forum and then give uh you know whoever feels they're best equipped to answer the question the chance to respond to the students questions so our first question here um are what are some key elements the program um, looks for in an applicant and do you have any recommendations for those of us who are attending, intending to apply to a program? We can start with Peter and uh, work down the line there. Um, so uh, 
the, the key thing, we're, we're not uh, teaching that much as far as like craft is concerned. We expect a student to have an undergraduate degree somewhere, somewhere in the creative uh, realm. Um, we accept students um, in proportion to what we try to, in emulating industry. So we're, we're accepting students roughly the same kind of proportions. We're, we try to accept more visual artists, but we're all going to bring in some writers in that same cohort, producers, uh, uh, that kind of thing, so that when they, there's a collaboration, the uh, students have that kind of depth within the, the, the class. So um, we're, we're not coming just by the visual portfolio. As a matter of fact, I know one of my students is out here who is a writer. So, you know, uh, we're, we're very excited to have that as well. Um, so we are looking for people who, who have that um, ability already to express themselves in a creative medium. What we're trying to do is teach you how to tell stories through designing environments. Uh, and and uh, whether you're writing or whether you're or doing visual work, um, the recommendation that I would have for applying the program, um, we do have a portfolio that we asked for. Um, and I always tell students, you know, it's great to be well rounded, but your portfolio should represent you. So if you are a great writer, show me writing. If you're a great visual artist, do that. If you don't know how to do 3D art, don't try to learn it to put a piece in there for that. Stick to your strength. Uh, when we're accepting students, we're happy taking a graphic designer or an illustrator or a 3D artist, an animator from all the di or interior designer. We have architects, mechanical engineers, industrial design. We're looking for the quality within that artistic discipline and a person who's able to express themselves in that discipline. And then we're teaching you how to tell stories, um, which sounds very simple over a three-year program, but anybody who's in the industry will tell you that's very, very, very difficult, you know. Um, and I always run the, the analogy uh, to film. You're, you're in film, they're teaching you to tell stories on a film, but that's incredibly hard, you know. And we're teaching you to tell stories by designing environments. So that, that's basically our program. Thank you. Mr. Shreve, any comments to add? You're muted, Bob. Oh. Yes, this helps if I turn that thing back on. Um, yeah, I, 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 would, I would key off a lot of what Peter said that, you know, we're really looking, we don't intentionally look for design skill sets. Uh, you, you need to demonstrate it in a portfolio, but it's not key to getting into the program. We're looking more to an adventurous spirit, uh, something that illustrates collaboration or a collaborative spirit, you know. But the key to this industry is not, is being able to work with others, okay? And storytelling, you know, hit the, um, and you know, it, like, as Peter alluded to, to tell them a story in this kind of an environment is very, very difficult. You've got a lot of different opinions. You've got a lot of different materials and motifs that you have to learn to work with. So we, we really want to see a well-rounded portfolio in the sense that you've, you've dabbled in a lot of different things, uh, but it's not key that you, you're a, we, we don't judge you on the ability to draw. We don't, we, but we want to see where your passion is and we expect you to tell us where your passion is. And we'll, and cause there's, you know, there's 300 to 400 to 500 roles in themed entertainment and trying to find where you fit best is really the focus of our program to try and help you learn terminology, learn the, the, the processes that are, you're going to be shoved into as soon as you go step into the industry. And then so that you got your feet under you and you can start pursuing the thing that means the most to you, so. Thank you. Uh, Shirley, anything to add? Okay, I'm gonna let Susan go first this time, and then <laughs> okay. bring it up through. Great, perfect, thank you. Um, so at, at the ETC, um, they, they try, because we have this project-based curriculum and you're on a team, when they bring a class in through admission, they really work hard to make sure the teams are gonna have the, the needed um, skill sets and, and they're balanced. So they try to bring in 40% of a class with a more technical background. So computer science, engineers, IT. Um, another 40% with art, and that could be fine art or graphics, 3D, 2D, whatever that might be. That other 20%, um, is, is a real mix. You know, they, they, I've seen students come through that have 
hard science backgrounds who have um, music and film and um, they uh, all over story writers and um, I always tell everyone that I talk to my most favorite combination and Shirley and MK will know exactly who I'm talking about. He was an accountant, but he was also a master puppeteer and um, he came to the ETC and has had a wonderful career after. Um, so what they're looking for while they're still trying to balance those teams, they really want to find people who are passionate about what they do um, and what they want to do. They see the ETC fitting into their career plan. Um, they need to be able to play well with others because again, it's so much of that team focus. As far as the GRE portfolio, all of that, um, the ETC welcomes both or either. Um, it's whatever go is going to demonstrate your skill set the best um, you would submit. They, they do look a lot at the statement of purpose that you write. It's a two or three page paper that talks about how, you know, what is your passion? What are you hoping to get out of this? How is this aligning with your career plan? So that's kind of how the evaluation um, portion goes and, and what they're really looking for uh, when students come in. I'm just going to add, um, if I could steal a word from MK, uh, and it's that extra 20% that Susan was talking about. MK used to call them the awesome other. They're not the technologists, they're not the artists, they're the 20% awesome other, and it's made up of all the things Susan just said. So I steal that all the time, MK, because I love it. <laughs> well, well, and what's fascinating about the random awesome is, wow, are they nervous the first week of school? Because they're surrounded by other people who are very easily compartmentalized. I have an undergraduate degree in mechanical engineering from MIT. I won this engineering contest. I published this paper. And somebody who's a puppeteer accountant, like they, they don't feel like they belong when in fact, because they're different is why they belong. Um, and, and I have to say, just, just trust the process, right? The Carnegie Mellon has been doing this for a long time. They know it works. And, and just thinking back to my first week there, the five students who came in a panic to speak to me about, oh, I made a bad choice, are the puppeteer accountant was one of them. Um, like they're all stellar in the industry right now um, because you need that diversity of thought, of process, of backgrounds. Awesome. Anything else you want to add to this answer, MK? Well, yeah, and, and Susan alluded to it a bit there. And this is the same for a resume as well as applying to grad school. Like, why do you even want to go to grad school? And why do you want to go to this program? Um, because the economy tanked and there's no jobs, might, might not be the best answer. Like that's an expensive proposition. You're paying anywhere between, you know, 30 and $90,000 for some of these programs. And if it's just a place you're looking to hide out till the job market gets better, that may be a bad investment. Um, so really think about what you want out of the program and also what you have to add to the program. And if you can talk about that articulately, and if you can't, sit with somebody who can help pull that out of you, whether that's um, a career services person like Susan or, or a, a, another professor you may have had. Um, but showing that you care about your chosen field, do you go to random late night Notre Dame TPEG meetings, right? That's, that's really good that you, you take the time to participate in your chosen field. Um, those all help not only give you a sense of purpose and direction, but it really helps communicate what you care about in these programs. Awesome. Thank you. Well, we'll move on to question number two. And if you're okay with it, MK, we can go backwards down the line this time. So what Peter doesn't have to be on the choosing it, man. <laughs> um, well, what's interesting is, um, again, like back, back in the long now ago, when I used to be able to say, there's no such thing as a degree in the theme park, right? Specific degrees is what we hired. Right? That's what the entire industry was made up of people. We had a lot of people from the military. They're used to collaborative projects with um, very high um, usage rates, um, mil specs it's called. Um, the advantage of a theme entertainment program versus a focus program is um, you know how to tell stories with your discipline. You hit the ground running instead of having to sort of be brought up to speed on what is theme entertainment because you know designing a real castle in a real country for real royalty is very different than designing a castle for a theme park. 
where it rains every afternoon and and there's lizards and mildew right so um the advantage is you understand that your chosen field now is does that is that a no is that a deal breaker if you don't have a degree in themed entertainment absolutely not you know the industry has been people up to speed for you know, since Cleopatra, two, three thousand years, we've been bringing people up to speed on what telling stories <laughs> in dimensional spaces is all about. Um, but there is a sense of comfort in, oh, this, this person knows what they're talking about. They understand collaboration. Um, as, um, as a SCAD program mentioned, they understand working on teams, they understand third shift, they understand telling stories in dimensional or, or nonlinear ways. And so there is a sense of, whew, they got it. All righty. Thank you. Let's pass it on to our duo from Carnegie Mellon. Do uh, you want me to start this time, Susan? Of course, yeah. Fine. Uh, for me, I'm going to put this in the context of some undergraduate classes that I teach. There's one a guest experience in theme park design, and it's focused, It's really open to grads and undergrads, but to the entire campus. So in that class, I get the mechanical engineers, the, the CITs, I get architects, designers, drama students, uh, psychologists, uh, you name it. I mean, the, the gamut, it runs the entire university. Some representation is in that class. The most difficult thing for them is when I split them up into teams where I very intentionally make sure that it's not a team full of mechanical engineers. And I'm not picking on mechanical engineers. You put it up there. So I'm just using that as my example. But I make sure that there's a mix of artists and, and designers and you know, mechanical engineers, any kind of other engineer, computer scientists, you name it. And the telling thing was when one mechanical engineer came up to me after class, and this was the end of the semester, and she said, yeah, you know, the best thing I've learned in this class is how to talk to those artists. <laughs> those artists. <laughs> but so, you know, in a specific program, they have all worked on projects with their discipline. What they haven't done as often is work with all these different disciplines. And that's what the theme park industry is made up of. So I, I think that from my perspective, and of course I'm biased because it's what we do at the ETC, um, but it works because you're, you have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to understand and respect. And you may not know what a computer scientist does, but you sure respect how long it can take to program something. So. To me, that's one of the most in, important reasons for the, you know, themed entertainment as opposed to a very specific in one discipline. So I, I'm going to um, take a more pragmatic approach to answering this question in that when you are going in a program that is um, like a themed entertainment, you, you're you going to become then part of an alumni base that is going to be people um, that you're going to be able to network with and connect with. And and that is something, um, you, you know, as you're thinking, I know you're still in college and I'm already talking about you going out to industry as a master's student, but it is something to think about and, and having that kind of group of that support behind you as you um, enter into industry as a new professional. Um, not taking again anything away from any of the engineering's, but that's gonna that that alumni base is gonna look very different than an alumni base at a program that does something um, in themed entertainment. Awesome, thank you both. Uh, on to Professor Shreve. Well, I'm gonna take an even more pragmatic approach. I think you should do where your passion lies. Okay, if you want to be a mechanical engineer, be a mechanical engineer. If you want to be a uh, a story writer, be a story writer. I mean, it's the passion that you bring to what you're doing that's really gonna make make or, or break you, okay? Um, mechanical engineers, frankly, make or break theme parks. You know, they, you know, the good ones never have a shortage of work, okay? Um, I think that the be most beneficial thing that the programs that, that we're looking at, or that you're interested in looking at, is uh, the fact that they will teach you collaborative arts, they will teach you process, I think, and 
they'll get you prepped to step into the roles that you're going to do. But it's always going to be about the passion that you bring to it. You know, I, I think uh, that's the role of a master's program as far as I'm concerned. Is just get you ready, okay? Because hopefully you've already got the passion. You've already got skills. You, you've gone through four years of undergraduate and you kind of know what you like or don't like. And we'll just kind of sharpen your pencil a little bit more and get you ready. So, Thank you. And Peter? So um, I'm, I am going to wind up reiterating a little bit of what was said there, or me. Um, you do have a very specific portfolio to the field of themed entertainment or themed uh, experience. Um, and uh, it's actually, if, as those of us who uh, know people in the field, it's very rare to be able to show your current work, especially if you're working you know, with all the NDAs and whatnot. Um, it's understood in the field that you could say, well, I'm working on a project in China, I'm working on a project here, but you can't show any work. Um, if you are taking a degree very specific to that field, you will have work that it pertains to the job that you're going to be looking for. Um, and with that saying, and I, I, I heard that mentioned too, there's a deep understanding of the industry. You're going to know all the, the, the firms that you want to apply to. You're going to understand what they do. You're going to know the vernacular. You're going to understand the jargon. Uh, there's not going to be a steep learning curve coming out of the uh, out of the program, and uh, that that kind of also makes you um, much more hireable to the uh, uh, potential employer. Uh, there is an attrition that they face because if they're bringing people in from similar disciplines and starting to talk to them about themed entertainment and themed experience. Um, not all of them stay. That's not, as Bob said, it's not maybe not their passion to begin with. They got the job, they started doing it, and they realized they wanted to be somewhere else. Um, if you're going to be uh, pursuing, especially a graduate degree in themed entertainment, um, you're going to be focused and you're going to know that this is where you want to be. You're going to have an idea where you want to go. And, and, and that's one thing it's going to do for you. Um, the, the real thing to me, the most important reason to, be, to take a master's degree is it's a deep exploration into the subject matter. And it's a deep understanding of that. Um, you know, as Bob said, you wanna be a mechanical engineer, be a mechanical engineer. If you want to design themed environments, this is where you go to really explore that, to understand the context and um, to do a thesis project that adds to the body of work in the field, moves the field forward. And that's really what it's about. It's, it is a master's program, you're leaving and uh, um, with all of our programs, there are terminal degrees and you could be a professor from that. And we want you to um, produce the kind of work that is exceptional, that is a, a time in your life when you're gonna be able to do something uh, that you can't do most of, you, you probably couldn't do in the professional world is express your own voice and do something that's really uh, 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 interesting exploration. Awesome. Thank you all for your responses to that question. And so for our last prepared question, uh, we'll be asking what are some key indicators that grad school is right for you versus trying to enter directly into the industry? And we'll <laughs> start it back off with Peter once again. Um, you know, I think th there's nothing wrong with not, you know, I, I think there's a, a trend where almost everybody has to go to grad school now and, and, the, and, the, and the bachelor's is, is considered just a, a bridge to a, a master's. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. I think um, entering the industry from a bachelor's point of view, it, it actually can be, you can be very successful with it. Um, for the reasons I was just talking about, a, a master's degree is uh, that much more in depth um, dealing much more with uh, conceptual work and, uh, and dealing really with developing your own voice as an artist. Most of the people we're taking into, the, into a master's program have been in industry for a few years. So they have that under their belt. They have an understanding of what it's like to work, uh, to be in a working professional environment, and they've chosen to come back to school to be part of the master's. I, I, I would say, MK mentioned one thing that she said that, uh, Master's programs, yes, if you're a private school could be quite, quite expensive and it's, it's, not, it's not a stopover. Um, a state school is significantly less. Uh, and one of the reasons I really enjoy being at UCF, especially if you're a Florida resident. Uh, so you're talking a fraction of the cost, um, 
but I, I do like that for one reason, because it's important uh, uh, to leave having been a student and not leave with massive debt, especially if you're going into a creative field. So that, that's, um, you know, if you can afford a great uh, private school, fantastic. Uh, but um, I, I think it's good not to have a big burden, especially in a creative industry. We're not paid like doctors and lawyers. <laughs> I, Very I would true. Echo, I would echo what Peter is saying. I, I really think that uh, it's um, going in with a, at a bachelor's level. You know, having that option to you is just because there, there's something that was recognized about you to, as a, a skill. Okay, and the problem that you find sometimes in a lot of creative endeavors is that when you step into a role, it's very, very hard to break out of that role. So if, you, if you're a good at illustrationist and you get hired by WDI or Universal to come in and work on a project and you're principally doing concept art and all that kind of stuff, you're going to have a hard time breaking out of that role of doing concept art. A master's will help you prepare to take another level, take yourself to another level and present yourself at another level. So where you, you can actually step up to a role that puts you in a driver's seat. We prepare you for leadership of these projects at the master's level. I don't know that that always occurs at the bachelor's level. That's all. Thank you. On to Shirley or Susan. Uh, I, I'll go first. It I think that we're saying, we're all saying the same thing to you over and over again. And it is not so much about undergrad or grad, it's about you. And I'm gonna go back to the mechanical engineer ex example that you had in that first question. If you went to undergrad and you studied and did well and have a passion to be a mechanical engineer and you apply at Disney or Universal or any other amusement theme park and they hire you in that capacity, then you're good. I mean, you have your talent, you have your background, you'll get the experience on the job and you have your passion, go for it. If you went to undergrad school for anthropology and decide now that you really want to get into um, designing theme parks, maybe grad school is a good place for you to go and hone those skills and to, to really um, zo zoom in, zone in, whatever, on the necessary talents that you need to have in order to be able to be competitive. Um, but it, it depends on what your background is, what you want to do with the rest of your life for at least the next three to five years. And then you make up your mind from there. Is it grad school or just go straight into the industry? And I'm gonna echo um, Shirley saying it is about you. And as a counselor, I think you need to kind of think through the process. Are you ready for more school? Do you need a break? Uh, I know I took a break um, between my bachelor's and my master's. I knew I was gonna go on, but I just needed a break. Um, and, and, that is more than fine. As, as we've heard it in these other schools, people come with industry experience. It's not as if you have to go immediately. Um, I, I think you need to have a pretty good idea that this degree is going to give you a return on your investment because you, they are expensive, but it's also your time that you're committing. Um, and these are intensive programs and, and you do commit a lot of time with that. Are you ready for that in, at this part in your life? Uh, so, so, you know, think about those things to think, are you ready to take on this? Um, and, 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 and go when you are ready to go. Yeah, it, it's, you, all, it's all about focus. Um, I'm a huge fan of liberal arts undergrad um, because you take anthropology and English literature and geology as well as your, your major field of study. But when you graduate, you're kind of equally good at a number of things. Um, and you don't have a very deep portfolio necessarily because you weren't doing whatever 100% of your time. And so allowing yourself to focus, um, as Peter said, like in a particular project that you own, um, uh, that's the advantage of a grad school program. But I mean, I actually also randomly ended up with a minor in anthropology for my undergrad. Um, never, just because I took X number of classes in it, um, never occurred to me that that would be useful as a professional. My, my undergrad is in animation and VR, but it turns out in theme entertainment, it's super useful. Because I learned how to do research, I learned to care about different demographics 
globally and across time. And it, it never occurred to me that I would be pulling back to that um, uh, random series of classes I had, but uh, uh, it's nice to have a broad foundation and then spend some time figuring out what you want to do and then graduate or, or post undergraduate work, whatever form that may take, really allows you to focus. All right. Thank you all for your answers to this question and to the first three. Um, looking now, we'll open it up to students on the call. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And if you want, just go ahead and use the little hand raise function in Zoom if you have a question for our incredible panel. And then uh, I think it should put them in order for me over on the right, and I'll call on you as it goes. So if there are any questions, feel free to go ahead and ask those now. Jessica, it looks like you have your hand raised first. So, I know you guys kind of talked about this at the beginning. First of all, thank you all so much for coming. This has been really, really interesting, and I'm always interested in learning about how I can continue to learn about themed entertainment after undergrad. I wanted to ask, so with all of these newer programs popping up in at the master's level, at the professional level, how do you feel about programs that are starting at the undergraduate level, such as Purdue's themed in, uh, theater engineering program? And I believe, uh, I believe Cal Poly has something similar, but I'm not sure. As an advisor to that program, I think it's badass. <laughs> um, they're, they're, the gentlemen putting that program together are asking all the right questions. Um, they're taking advantage of the diversity of classes already on campus to, um, to really make it robust. Um, uh, yeah, so as with any undergrad grad program, if this was a lecture on biology, this would be very similar. You know, you, you do a wider range of stuff as undergrad, as a grad student, you focus. Um, so the theme entertainment undergrad programs, minors, certificates, classes that are popping up, um, they're awesome. They, they, they give you a nice broad overview of what the industry is through your particular lens. Purdue happens to be um, engineering focused. Um, but that just gives you more information about what you want to do. Ringling also just started an undergraduate program, um, a BFA in themed entertainment design. You can't and start soon UN, enough. Yeah. And UNLV has an undergraduate in mechanical engineering for entertainment. Thank you very much. Any other comments on that from the panel? All right, we'll pass it on to Caitlin Wilkinson next. Yeah, so I just want to reiterate what uh, Jessica said, and thank you all for being here and, and giving us, you know, this advice. It's such an amazing opportunity. Um, I guess my question would be, uh, what advice would you have for a first year undergrad student who's just starting out in the college experience and is really, really interested in getting into themed entertainment? Personally, I would echo what MK said. Get yourself well-rounded as you can. Know that you're going to be exposed to a lot of different things uh, and then practice, practice, practice. And again, just do everything with passion and follow where, try and figure out where you want to go with it. But, you know, while you're in school, tackle everything that comes your way. You know, if you think you might want to know it, go figure it out and know it, okay? Because you know, I, 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 the one thing that I always look back on in my career is if I was back, I wish I knew now what I knew. I mean, I knew now what I didn't know then, okay? Because <laughs> I, I would have lived my life differently in college, okay, than I did. And uh, so take advantage of the fact that you're in college. Take advantage that you have access to all this wealth of information and an opportunity to, to practice, practice, practice. So do it. So. I would say don't put the pressure on yourself that you have to know everything that you want to do for the rest of your life right now. I, I think you should find out what your interests are, what your passion is, and then evaluate how good you really are at those things. Um, because just because you're passionate about being a brain surgeon doesn't mean you should be one if that's not where your talent actually lies. But you, you need to find out what's your passion. And you don't know that until you start to dip into all these different areas as an undergrad and try to, to get a taste. There's so much out there. 
um, take a taste of all of this and see what works for you. And then you can start to expand on that. And if you are interested in themed entertainment, look for connections out there. Do you, is there a TPEG club? Is there a TEA club? It, 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 you know, how can you connect with like-minded students and then through them connect with like-minded professors and professionals and just keep expanding that network because it's all about the network. Um, you, you have to learn what you have to learn, but you have to be able to network and you have to know who you're supposed to be networking with. So, so for example, when this meeting is over, all y'all are going to LinkedIn, all of us, right? You're going to start that and you're going to have a very nice, polite little note that says, oh my God, you guys are so great. <laughs> Amazing. Um, I would like to connect with you professionally. Um, you're already clearly participating in this meeting. I don't know if your individual campuses have a uh, themed Entertainment Association Next Gen group. Um, you might have a campus group, but then also uh, a TPEG or TEA. But then the the parent organization also has a student membership, um, which is called Next Gen. And what I super like about the TEA is they let you be a Next Gen until three years after you graduate, because they know that once you graduate, you suddenly haven't figured it out, right? So you have some time to sort of be groomed into the industry. Um, IAPA, uh, which will not be happening this year, but next year um they have a student ambassador program um that's that's really good and um everyone on this call can point you to that you know if you ping me i can send you links to stuff to check out shirley peter well, everyone can send you um here's what i have seen students do um or, or here's what i did that worked well for me and networking is a terrible word especially since i live in la it feels like a little sleazy um and if anyone has a better word i'm, I'm all for it um, well, that's worse. That's worse, sir. <laughs> I use the word connecting because I think it takes a lot of pressure off. Yeah, and yeah. It's a more connecting. equal relationship. Yeah. 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 And also, if you haven't figured out, we love to talk about ourselves. <laughs> and, and just reaching out to someone with, no, don't be all like, I need a job now. But just like, I think what you do is interesting. Can we connect? And you will usually get really great response. And I just see uh, Carson's on here with his um, pretty red AOA hat. Peter had mentioned earlier the value of connecting and, and the folks in the industry that you meet. Um, Carson is putting on a podcast now um, due to the connections he has. So he, he had an undergrad, then he worked for a bit. Now he's in grad school and he's a thing, right? He's a certain subject matter expert, but putting together um, a resource like a podcast for theme entertainment, um, he's pulling from all these resources, uh, these connections, thank you, I'm gonna use that all the time now, um, these connections that he's obtained. They just, it's a very, it's a very um, project-based industry, so we all rotate to different places, um, and so we're friendly with people all over. Um, take advantage of that. One of them might give you a cute AOA hat that Carson's wearing. I wanna share a little uh, story from years ago, so a student had told me they were totally intimidated by Joe Rohde. They had no idea, I mean, they knew who he was, but they just could not even imagine approaching him and trying to talk to him because, no, Rohde, you know, he, they can't. I saw this man at a next gen breakfast and he was so, welcoming and engaging and loving to talk to these students that I thought, where do you get this idea that people are unapproachable? And most people in the themed entertainment industry are very, very approachable. It, it takes a little bit of chutzpah on your part, maybe, um, to go up to someone and say, uh, excuse me, MK. Uh, but. but <laughs> but if you do it, she's there. Mm -hmm. Or I can send you to somebody who may be more appropriate, right? I can give you my answer, but you know what? Here's somebody who's my better answer for you. Yeah, take that deep breath and go do it. Just, just And you know, the worst thing that could happen is you hit on the one person in the industry who's a real... And <laughs> They just diss you and dismiss you, and oh well. 
you know, so what? Then you go and, and you find the next person and talk to them. All right, so our next question is in the chat here, um, and I'll read it out because some internet connection issues, but Chad is wondering um, about if any of these programs have TA positions that one might be able to consider in order to help fund their education. We don't have SCAD, no. But we have lots of uh, uh, scholarships. We, yeah. we, do not, we do not have TAs specific to our program. Um, I do have a couple of students who are working uh, as research assistants in engineering and a collaborative project doing VR work. Uh, so there are opportunities around UCF because they do utilize a good deal of research assistance and teaching assistance, but we, we don't offer it specific to that. But um, our tuition in state is 6,400 a year for the, uh, for, so it, it's pretty reasonable. Ours is a little higher than that at Carnegie Mellon. <laughs> the ETC doesn't offer scholarships um, and TA positions will not fund your education. They're a nice little stipend um, and there are, are lots of those. The undergraduate programs though at Carnegie Mellon, which it, it, you know, you, if you're, well, you're already undergrad, you don't want to check out the IDA program, but there are programs that do have um, scholarships and, and other graduate programs at CMU have scholarships, but uh, not, the, not the ETC. I have two TAs um, for my 100 person class. I have two TAs for my 35 person class. I have one. Um, they specifically request that they can TA for this class so they understand what it is. Um, and the Walt Disney Company pays for them. That part of their part of our commitment to education is that they not only give me for free, I get a full background check. Don't worry, UCLA parents. I've been vetted. Um, so uh, the Walt Disney Company pays for my time and we also pay for my TAs is, is our investment in that. Again, it's not a lot. Um, so we pay for two TAs for one quarter, one TA for another quarter, and a trip to Disneyland, which didn't happen this year. Mm -hmm. um, and that bill is like $21,000. So nobody's getting a lot of money, but it, it will help offset some of your costs. All right. Thank you all. And then I believe Carson has his hand raised for the next question. I was just typing it out, but I will ask it. I kind of have a selfish question while I have this cool panel assembled. Uh, what are some of your thoughts on the future of education for or higher education for themed entertainment? Is it just expanding the number of programs there are? Is it moving towards a unified curriculum? Something else? Any thoughts? Both. It's, it's doing both of those. Peter, who runs the TEA at S-A-S-S-A? E-E-A-A-S. -E -A -A <laughs> There's a lot of letters. Entertainment and Attractions Academic As Society. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we um, actually, Cheryl and, and, and MK were, were, were are part of our co-founders. And um, the Academic Society is all about uh, connecting the different academics who are teaching in the field. Most of us are master's programs. Um, we are working, uh, we have a directory of, of all the different, not all of the different programs, but 16 different programs that teach uh, themed experience uh, and, and themed entertainment. And uh, we have a symposium that we've held two years in a row. We, we're not holding it this year because of, uh, of uh, COVID and uh, an academic journal. But the, uh, the, the point of that is actually to um, interact with each other, uh, learn from each other, and, and hopefully uh, elevate the, the, the quality of the programs in the field. Um, I do believe that we need more, pro I, 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 you know, honest, obviously it's competition, but I think we need more programs. There are thousands of film schools and, the film, and, and they're all feeding the film industry. Um, we can't feed the themed entertainment industry with just uh, 10 or 12 different programs out there or five or six, you know. Uh, so we need more programs and we need, uh, I, I think we do need some sort of standardization of what it means to get a degree in themed entertainment or themed experience. But at the same time, you never want to dilute the individual value that a specific program offers, right? So um, 
you know, USC has two game design programs, one through computer science and one through film. They graduate very different types of students. Um, some of the standardization that we've been talking about, which consistently come up time and time again, are some of the soft skills. Can you work on a team? Can you collaborate? Can you keep together a schedule? Um, do you know what to do when things go wrong and you have to pivot real fast? Um, so brainstorming, collaboration, understanding production processes, those are pretty much every program should cover that. Um, but if like Peter's program is through, um, it's a theater degree, right? Isn't it through the School of Theater? So, so that's a very different set of expertise and you're gonna have come through the ETC. And I think that's super valuable as well. Now, if, if everyone's the same, like that's no fun, um, but there should be a core, um, a set of understanding. And also all of these programs are super well connected to industry. They, they very well, um, they do a good job of asking without being trade schools, right? Like, what do you need from our students? How do we, how do we constantly make our students um, as useful as possible and as employable as possible? Um, and so as those things change over time, um, ideally the programs will change as well to meet that need. I, I hope think it would benefit you to research these different programs because even though there is that connective tissue of themed entertainment, they're all really very, very different. And it, like at ETC, we're project based. So if you intend to come to the ETC and take a full load of elective classes, you're in the wrong spot. If you don't want to work on project teams, you're in the wrong spot. Um, so you need to research all of the different universities and college <coughs> programs and then find out which one fits you best. Because again, it's, it's all about you. Yeah, it is. The focus is going to be on teamwork no matter where you go, I think. Uh, and intense pressure. Be prepared. I mean, in a quarter or semester environment, you're still not getting the same length of time that a, a typical project would take to develop. So you're, you're, we're going to test you. And that's the whole idea, to see what, how you handle pressure and work together under those pressures. So we'll prep you. All right. Thank you all for those responses. So for one last question, I have a question for you, um, and that is, Right. For those of us who mass, a master's program might not be, you know, the right fit, or for those who finish up their master's program, what are some steps we can take to continue to educate ourselves, you know, in general, but also regarding this industry after we've sort of finished up our formal education? I think take advantage of things that are there. IAPA, TEA, they're, they're wonderful organizations. I mean, they play great benefits in my career. I mean, they've helped me connect. They've helped me uh, find work. Uh, so I, I think stay active through them, join them, participate, take advantage of everything they offer. So I think, doesn't Carson sit on somebody's board? Aren't you on the East Coast Themed Entertainment Association board? Yeah. So, so aside from participating in these things as an attendee or as some, a member who's reading literature and the like, um, you can also serve on boards. You can volunteer at conferences. There's different levels of engagement um, that you can sign on for. Great. And before you graduate your undergraduate program, you should look into summer internships or co-ops and apply to the companies that you might be interested in after graduation and be able to work for them as a summer intern, um, I don't know what schools are all different. Some allow, encourage, require that you do internships or co-ops or something like that. So take advantage of that because very often those relationships are what turn into offered positions once you do graduate. So I think do that. And then as Bob said, stay involved. The TEA is an amazing organization and I, you should research it, see if it fits what you're interested in. And for students, the, the dues, the yearly dues are minimal. It's like $50 a year, I think. And the connective opportunities are just amazing, so. And, and also, as we, as we mentioned earlier, like, like really have an honest conversation with yourself about what are you good at? What do you wanna get better at? And if it's an issue of, 
wow, I love 3D modeling. I'm pretty good at it. I don't have a very robust portfolio. That's not necessarily a graduate degree. That's taking some free or low cost classes online to really beef up your portfolio. And there's a lot of really great options out there. If you have trouble finding them again, just reach out and we can throw them at you. Um, one of the nice, by the way, something nice happened out of pandemic. Um, this explosion, like what we're doing right now, this explosion of lectures that has happened in the best interest of students, um, Ohio State's Notre Dame, um, UCSD, um, UCLA, USC, they're all doing really great lecture series. Uh, and sometimes they're workshops to teach you a skill. The TEC workshop, is anyone here participating in that? So um, knowing that all y'all lost your internships this summer, um, some professionals here in Southern California set up a six week workshop to teach theme entertainment brainstorming and the art of the pitch. Halfway through, they knew that they had something and they've expanded, the framework was really solid. And so they've expanded. Now there's one in audio design, there's one in show writing. Um, again, the cost is minimal and it, the students are just paying to keep the server operational to store their stuff. Um, that has exploded. San Diego State has got the student themed entertainment program. Um, that they're doing, uh, which is all student run. There's no industry professionals there. So that's, that's a different thing where they're like, we got this. We're teaching each other, we're training. 70 students just wrapped that program up. Um, Imagathon, anyone doing that? Imagathon is another spinoff, uh, which is a, a student or young entry professional engineer um, who are working on, again, short-term projects just to get experience on something to both bulk up portfolio and like to work on a large scale, long range project, well, long range, few weeks project. Um, and, and those those, those all have been born since April um, because we saw a need and, and, a, and a really, really talented group of folks who wanted to participate. Just to say, um, whatever it was saying is actually terrific. Um, all the online workshops, the, the, the uh, TEC, TECWS, terrific. It certainly isn't a substitute for actually a degree program and full study, but it's, um, it, it, I think it's fantastic because it gets people, if you think you might be interested in it, you do the workshop and say, yeah, this is something I want to pursue. That's what it's really, it's, it's terrific for that. It's like, uh, it's like reading a book. You say, okay, I, I think I want to know more about this. And, uh, and, and that's what it's great for. Um, and um, it keeps you involved with the industry, keeps you meeting people that, who have similar interests. And I, I think those are, I, I fully support uh, uh, all, the, all these great things that are happening uh, online but since COVID, so it's great. Well, let's give a round of applause to our panelists for today. Thank you all so much for, you know, the time and the wisdom with us. Uh, I learned a lot and I know everyone else here did as well. Um, I'll just say, do you have any parting words you'd like to share with us before we wrap this up? It's been great. It's been great meeting everybody. I'm glad you guys did this. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, really. And uh, uh, truly, if you, I'm always happy to connect. I'm always, um, I, I always make time for the youth, of, of, uh, especially if you're interested in this industry, because we need warm bodies all the time. Okay, so uh, feel free to connect. I, I, I welcome it. So thank you for the opportunity. And don't just connect with the, the folks with the biggest mouths um, this afternoon. Um, connect with each other. You all are about to be a force in the industry. So just like roll over everyone, the little name will pop up. Fine, because you all have a LinkedIn profile, right? Right. And, and interconnect with each other. And some people are already sending out LinkedIn's. Way to go. I got, got my first request here. <laughs> yeah, it, it is good to talk with you. I think we're all always open. Um, if we don't have the answers, we can send you to someone who does have the answers. Um, just ask. Mm -hmm. All righty. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. And uh, with that, we'll wrap this up. We'll have no session next Thursday, but look forward to two Thursdays from now, our next semester session. Have a great night, everybody, and uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.